Hello guys and welcome back to another Imperator tutorial. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the powered armor that I basically made. It's just some basic armor that I put together and as you can see on the uh, icon next to the name it basically lists how much power it can store and how much power it basically has at the moment in red. So uh, when it gets to a fully charged part it will actually um, turn green and then when it's about midway it will turn yellow and then when it's close to being over then it'll turn red. So that's basically how that uh, kind of coloring system works and then uh, if we can actually charge only certain pieces if we have it outside of our inventory and if it's in our inventory then we can charge it as well. So let's just right click and if we go into our inventory we can notice that we have strength and resistance uh, both level 2. If we hover over these icons you can see that the power is slowly going down. It's now in yellow so it's about midway and these ones should be still green for the most part. And uh, yeah, so that's basically what goes on here. Now this is close to ending, so it's in red now. And this one should be in yellow. And that will end first. And as you can see, we only have resistance two now. Um, if we had only one armor, then it has resistance one. If we have it two, then it's basically um, the resistance to you but we only have two that are currently draining these two are depleted so that's why there's only one effect of the level two on it so it's a pretty simple system and um, straightforward when you actually do it you just right click with the item and it recharges everything and uh, you can get a little bit of a boost or something for maybe a boss fight or something like that you can get some strength and resistance or such uh, but yeah that's basically how that's all set up. So let's go into M Creator and we'll take a look at the actual code. All right, so the first things first, uh, we have the uh, armor itself. So we have all the different pieces and stuff that we've put together. Uh, the armor has um, just a repair item, basic settings that you would set up for your regular armor. And then each one of these uh, particular blocks has their own, or particular items have their own uh, update tick. Um, basically this just controls the display name and the power and stuff like that. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, what, what's going on is we have set our max power. Now this basically is used for when we're actually determining how full the uh, bar is and then we're basically dividing that by three and then getting the value that we need for the different coloring. So that's where the max number comes in and then we're basically testing if the item in our um, the item is in our off uh, armor slot slot three for a helmet if that's if it is our helmet then what we're going to do is we're going to basically go and we're going to get MBT number tag and then we're going to set the variable to power provide an item stack so it's the item that basically is draining in our in this case it's the helmet and then we're going to test if it is greater than zero so if it's above zero so 0 0.01 or higher basically um, if that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the power for the MBT data of, or the, the, the value of the power variable to power variable minus one. So basically this is going to decrease the energy or the power for the actual armor. Uh, some other things that are done here are we're getting the, we're setting a local variable. Uh, we have two local variables over here. One is a lowercase power, one is lowercase max, and then capital P pow for power. So P power right there. Uh, these are basically used for the display name um, to make it look a little more tidier. Uh, if you were to just stick the name tag right up here or the power va variables, then what would happen is it would have a little point zero after it and that kind of looks a little bit messy. So what I've done is I've basically gone down here and uh, set the um, variable to basically replace and then I've set point zero 
because it's always going to be a solid number regardless unless you're subtracting like zero point something or other and then I'm basically replacing it with a space so this is a empty block but it has one space in it for empty space and I think maybe I'm just going to double check that no it's just an empty block so it just removes it completely and um, then what we're doing is we're getting the variable that we want to replace that with so basically this is the power variable we're going to set the power variable to remove the 0, 0.0 after the thing and after that what we've done what we're doing is we're going to get the power of from the actual item if it's equal to or greater than and then what we're going to do is we're going to get maximum power divided by three and then times two what this will do is it will test if the energy like the power for the item is uh, over than over the two-thirds of the way of charged so if it's over two-thirds so if you have like three things it's over the it's like one two and then the third one above so this one section right here so if it's basically two-thirds uh, charged then it's going to display green text and then the power variable and then it's going to display green text for the maximum power and then finish up with some styling so eight, the sign here for the color code and the E basically stands for green uh, E is yellow and C is red so this other one right here is we're testing if it's equal to or greater than um, maximum power divided by 3 and if it's maximum power by divided by 3 it's only um, one third or above that is fully charged now because we're testing for this first uh, we can actually just test for this after without creating a range uh, if it's not this if it's lower than two-thirds of the way full or higher then what we need uh, what we can do is we can actually test for something lower than that so in our case what we've done is we've basically tested for one-third of the or greater than and then what this can do is if this is also false then what we can do is create an else statement and just display the text as red so that's basically what all the different uh, procedures for the armor is it's pretty straightforward if I go into here it's exactly the same thing uh, nothing is changed outside of the slot number uh, the armor slot for chest plates is two and then we selected our basically our uh, chest uh, piece and then we have our leggings which is slot number one for our armor and the armor for the leggings itself and the last one is the boots and this is slot zero and the boots are the one now for all these different parts uh, there's a whole bunch of things all over the place I'll pick out the more important ones these are an item MBT data so what we need to do is actually go into the items scroll down and then you will have your two item MBT data parts right here uh, the display name can be changed by I believe it's a little bit further down right here display name that's what I'm using for this and then I'm using create text this block right here to basically input a different variables and systems to actually display the, t the text if you use uh, the color code sign and then F it will basically create a unitalicized uh, white text like it, normal display tags that's why that's right there and uh, what else is here we have um, local variables those are pretty straightforward you just create a local variable string type in what you want and then set save and then you can basically set that up now if you're on one or 20 21.2 then what you're going to need is these ex same exact variables uh, because uh, there's currently a bug with this particular version it will be fixed in the uh, 20 
21.3. So uh, it's just a matter of getting that. Now the get item from armor, uh, armor slot, that is under, I believe, entity data. And then you go down to here and it says get item from armor slot and then provided entity. So that's what you want right there. Uh, the other thing is the replace block. That's another important feature. That's under text, and then you can go and get the replace block right here, and just add that to your set variable, and then set zero or point zero one, or pardon me, point zero, and then just basically add a empty block like this to re replace with, and then it will basically replace uh, it with um, empty space or actually no space, it'll just delete it. All right, so that's basically all that's going on here. The other blocks um, are pretty straightforward. You can find all the logic operators under here. Um, you have your text operators, you have your uh, math operators here. Uh, I don't think we used any true or false ones. Actually, I don't think we used any string ones either. So it's just this block right here that you basically need for this procedure. And then we also use the math operator, which uh, multiplication and all your basic math things are right here. So that's basically what we've used for that. All right, so let's move on to the other things. So charging the actual script is a little bit different. Um, we have, a, I believe, a global procedure for that. Uh, when player right clicks with item and then what we're going to do is we're going to test for the item and then what we're going to do is we're going to test for the two things uh, actually uh, we need to test for the armor piece and we need to test for the power for that item if it's equal to zero if it's equal to zero you could set it to less than the maximum amount that would also work but it would also take more um, charging like more resources so it's not really perfectly efficient but uh, if if you wanted to do basically that then what you would need to do is you would need to delete that set this to your max power and then what this would do is it would basically um, after you set the variable, if it's less equal or less than your max power, then what you would want to do is basically allow for recharging. So that would work. We'll actually try that in just a second. Um, the other thing is what we're doing is we're basically setting the power to our maximum power, and then we're going to uh, consume main hand. So this is just a local variable right here. It's a logic variable, so we're going to set this to true. And then we can just run this one script down here after we've basically done all these things above. So again, all the different pieces do the exact same thing. Uh, it's just basically adding the maximum power to the power variable for the actual item. Now power is basically the current power that it has. Maximum power is the, well, as much power as it can hold. So it also stores how much we can actually set to when recharging. So basically that's what's going on there. And then when it does um, run this particular script here, what it's going to do is it's going to cancel out the trigger slash the uh, cancel the event. And then what it's going to do is basically set the main hand item and then get item get number of items in mean hand and then it's going to subtract that by one and then it's going to apply redstone for the item that it should be so i'll try to cover all this uh it shouldn't be too much to cover uh if statements those can be found under flow control uh item in main hand so this again can be found under entity if you scroll down far enough you have your item in main hand and item in off hand. So you want the main hand item one and your armor piece, your armor slots are again down here. And uh, then what we have is our item MBT variables. So those again are under item slots or item procedures. And then you have your MBT variables right here. And this uh, cancel event can be found under advanced and it's this one right here. 
Uh, the script right here for get number of items, this can be found under uh, items, item procedures, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, there's this block right here, get number of items, and then it says provided by item stack. Uh, basically what I've done is replace that with the main hand item and that basically takes away the dependency for item stack. So basically we're just going to test for the main item in our main hand and then we're going to basically subtract that by one so it lowers the number by one basically consuming the item. All right, so that's basically that. I'm just going to quickly update these and then we can move on to the next thing. So I'm going to just delete those and we're just going to grab that, put that over here, grab that, and grab that. And then we're just going to update the variables for these to maximum power, like so. And then we'll test that out after we've basically covered the procedures. <laughs> All right, so let's save that. And then the last one, last procedure that we have is the um, player tick update. Now this basically holds the, uh, what do you call it? The status effects. And what we're doing here is we're going to actually set a number variable so this one again you can set your different types of variables this one's a number one set it to um, power level and what I'm doing here is I'm basically testing if the power level or power is greater than zero if it's greater than zero I'm basically setting that local variable to plus one so every time there is a piece of armor with more with it, some power on it it's going to increase that value by one. So because there's only four slots, uh, what I've done is after I've basically calculated if there's enough power for all of these or different parts, what I've done is I've gone down here, used a if else statement and created a uh, bunch of different conditions. So if there is power level equals one, then I'm just giving resistance uh, for resistance with level one for one tick. And then if it is uh, two items, so if two of these slot, two of these items still are charged, then I'm giving resistance level two. Now setting this to one for level one is actually level two. Level zero is actually level one. And then what we need, uh, if there's three pieces of armor, then what's happening is there is um, strength level one, and then there is resistance level two. If there's all four pieces of armor, then it's both strength level two and resistance level two for one tick. All these are for one tick. So that's basically what's going on in that last procedure. So. Um, outside of that, I don't think there is too much I need to cover with this particular one. The potion effects can be found under entity management and it should be this one right here. Uh, you can apply that or you could use this one if you want to just use particles and stuff. Uh, if you want ambient particles, you can also set this to true if you wanted to. But I normally use this one because it has more support. Uh, this one doesn't have as much support. but um, yeah, that's basically, I've just let them all be false so you don't actually see the particle effects or anything like that. But uh, let's go back into MCrater and I'll show you basically that recharging system. All right, so we're back in game and I just wanted to quickly show this. So if we go into our inventory, we can see that our legs and boots are decharged and we're just about out of power for those. So if we charge that up again, uh, go to our inventory, you can see that all the parts actually have power now. That's thanks to the, um, basically the script that we changed, which was changed it to the maximum value from zero. So if it was equal to zero, then it would be only be able to be charged if it was at zero, if you want it to kind of charge regardless, like 
for now, for example, when it was just getting low like that, then what we can do is we can basically set it to the maximum um, test if it's less than the maximum um, value of the stored. So in this case, it would be less than 120 or 1,200. And if it's less than that, then basically recharge it. So again, that's basically how it works. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.